the nonprofit podcast powered by DonorBox. Unsurprisingly, one of the top, if not the top questions we get asked here at DonorBox is how can we bring new donors into our organization? And as you gear up for giving season, donor acquisition becomes especially important. Donor acquisition is critical to the success of any nonprofit organization, and in some cases, it can be the difference between a successful year and a not-so-successful, just hanging in there, result for an organization. Welcome to the Nonprofit Podcast. I'm Jenna, nonprofit advocate here at DonorBox. We're here each week with practical actions you can use today to increase donations and take your nonprofit to the next level tomorrow. The giving season is a great time to make sure you've mastered your donor acquisition strategies. The concept is simple. It's important to acquire new donors now who will give again throughout the year and in future seasons. So today I'm gonna give you five tips for donor acquisition that will appeal to both nonprofit startups who perhaps have no or very few donors and also established organizations with an existing donor base. But first, let's get our feet on the ground. What exactly is donor acquisition? Simply put, it's the process of finding and attracting new donors. The goal is to turn people who are interested in your cause into people who are willing to give money to support that cause. Now, here's a critical point in making your acquisition strategy effective. Donor acquisition is different from fundraising. While fundraising usually involves asking people for money on an ongoing basis or for a special campaign, donor acquisition focuses on getting new people involved with your cause for the first time. We all know there are definitely challenges associated with donor acquisition. If you're a nonprofit startup, you may not know where to start, how to get the word out, or who your target audience even is. Or conversely, you may already have a well-established donor base, but growing demand for your services means you need to reach out to new audiences to keep up. This is a perennial nonprofit problem, but we've got your back today with five tips that will help you plan and prioritize an acquisition strategy for the season and the year to come. So let's get the basics down. First up and tip number one is do your research. And by that, I mean, do the groundwork and get to know your new donor. This is relevant to any nonprofit during the donor acquisition process. When you're looking for new donors, it's so tempting to just start sending out emails or cold calling people. But before you do that, you need to do the research. And here's how. If you are a new organization with no donors yet, ask yourself, who is your ideal donor? Why is that your ideal donor? What are their interests? Where do they live? And how much money do they make? These are all questions you'll have to answer before you can even think about where and how to approach them. To get going, you can try intelligent targeting with your set of parameters through donor searches, marketing lists, or a similar service. There's a lot of these. With this, you'll be buying information for known donors who have given money to causes similar to yours, and it can be well worth the investment. To find out more detail on your options, pop across to our nonprofit blog. We've just published a great piece on prospect research tools, and you can find the link for that in the show notes. For an established nonprofit with an existing donor base, you're ahead of the game here as you already have some of this information, right? So pull the data from your CRM or donor database and make sure you know who your current donors are. Is there a certain demographic that donates more often or gifts the highest amount? With that done, your next step is to talk to your current donors. Ask them what they love about your organization and what drives or inspires them to support the mission. This is a really important step. Why? Because it helps you figure out where else you can look for donors who match those same characteristics. Plus, once you have this information on hand, it'll help you understand what kinds of messaging will resonate with them and equally important, what won't. 
This saves you a lot of time and energy around your targeted messaging, as does using Google Analytics to see who is visiting your site and where those visitors came from. This again will help you further your insights into what kind of messaging is resonating with your potential donors, as well as where they're coming from, meaning you'll know which platforms are most effective for reaching them, which sets us up for my second tip. Meet them where they are. Now, this is a great catch-all phrase, but what exactly does it mean? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Once you find out what social media your prospects use, where they get their news, and what other organizations they may support, again, Google Analytics and those marketing agencies can help you with finding this info, then you need to take part in these same activities to build their awareness of your nonprofit. You take your message to them and then meet them where they are. So if your perfect demographic is millennials, head over to Instagram. But if you are targeting professionals, LinkedIn will be your platform of choice. But always post on the social media platform your prospects use the most. Alternatively, if you have the budget, you can run paid targeted ads on those platforms or buy a spot in your local newspaper. And of course, you can get literal and actually meet them by attending events that will expose your organization to your perfect potential donors. And now that we can meet in person again, let's make that work for us. Which brings me to tip number three, leveraging your board and volunteers. Don't let a lack of donor connections keep you from reaching your goal. If you're looking for new donors, why not turn to the people who have already shown support for your cause? Leveraging your board, volunteers, and don't forget your other supporters too is one of the best ways to bring in new prospective donors. Your board and volunteers are a part of a network of people who already care about your cause, deeply enough that they're committing their precious time to it. They are your ambassadors and can, as your representatives, help you reach people outside of your network by connecting you into their networks. Invite them to use those professional and private networks to spread the word about your organization and encourage others to give to your organization through peer-to-peer fundraising. And if you don't have a board or volunteers yet, this is where your own friends and family come in. An important success factor when you ask board members or volunteers to -to peer-to-peer fundraise is giving them the tools they need to be effective. So this might mean providing them with information about the types of campaigns that work best for your organization, along with sample messages and materials for them to use when reaching out to potential donors. And we've created a helpful DonorBox Academy course on peer-to-peer fundraising, complete with these templates and toolkits to help you get started. And you can find the link for that in today's show notes. Much of the work that you need to do in donor acquisition is based on the relationship you build with donors. And tip four is all about being visible. So let's look at how to show face in your community. When you're trying to get new donors, you have to be visible. You have to be seen by people who might be interested in donating to your cause. And that means getting out there and interacting with others in your community. When people see you and know your name, they're more likely to trust you and be willing to donate to your cause. And this means setting up booths at community events, attending town hall meetings, volunteering at places where your target audience volunteers, holding your own events, and really getting to know your neighbors. As someone who runs a nonprofit, it's your job to engage with your community. But if you're not a person who likes to get out there, then don't worry. Just be sure that there are other people at your organization who do. And again, your board and volunteers can really help here. Whether it's you or a member of your team showing face, uh, be sure to have a way to collect email addresses and phone numbers so you can reach out to these people later on and have some sort of takeaway ready, whether it's a brochure or a one sheet or a piece of swag that people can remember you by. And on the subject of remembering, let's get into tip five, reacquire lapsed donors. You may think this is uh, for more established nonprofits, but it's also great advice for nonprofit startups for the future. We call these donors Cybunts, so those who gave some year, but unfortunately not this. 
These are the people who once gave to your organization but stopped donating for some reason. These people might have moved away, had a life change, or somehow forgotten about your organization. And uh, let me suggest maybe for at least some of them, they weren't being engaged enough, perhaps. But here's the thing. These people loved your organization before, and they may love it still. They may just need a gentle reminder of the impact they can have with their generosity. And if you can re-engage them, they could be your next donor who gives every month or two. By using your CRM or donor database, you can easily identify these lapsed donors by searching for all donors who haven't made a gift, say, in the last 24 months or so. And once you've identified them, make sure you put them back in your engagement cycle. And here are five really effective ways to get that in motion. You can send a personalized letter reminding them of their past support and how much they mean to your organization. Offer them to sign up for an automatic monthly donation program or a membership so that they never have to think about giving again. It's really easy. Ask them if there's anything specific that could make them feel more connected to your cause, like volunteering or perhaps attending an event. Survey them about ways to improve the experience for donors and offer incentives for being an active donor, like special access to events or special content that others don't get. And I've seen many organizations have success with this method. It just takes a little time and attention. And on that note, here's an important reminder. As you're building your nonprofit's donor acquisition strategy, remember that retention is just as important, if not more important, as acquisition. It's easy to get swept up in the excitement of building up your donor base, but don't forget that relationships that you build with your donors are more important than the numbers, and creating relationships takes time. Along with your donor acquisition plan, be sure you have a stewardship plan ready so that you can keep those supporters happy and engaged. Remember, the giving season is a marathon, not a sprint. It will take time to acquire new donors. And one strategy might work for one organization, but not for another. Overall, the most important thing to keep your eye on is the long term. It's about finding people who care deeply about your mission, are intent on becoming repeat supporters for your cause, and are interested in crafting a long-term relationship with your organization. And as you work on building your donor acquisition strategy, here's something you can do right now. During your next board meeting, ask your board members to introduce three new people to your cause. It can be anyone who they think would benefit from learning more about what you do or becoming involved with your organization. It could be a friend, a family member, or a neighbor, someone from their place of worship or their child's school, a work colleague, their hairstylist, whatever. You never know where those introductions might lead. Thank you for choosing to spend time with the Nonprofit Podcast. I hope you've left with the confidence to take a small step today that will make a big difference tomorrow. Don't forget to download and review the podcast or give it a thumbs up if you're listening to the Nonprofit Podcast on YouTube. Your review is a great way to help others find us. You're here to help others. We're here to help you. Until next time, stay inspired. The Nonprofit Podcast, powered by DonorBox, helping you help others.